eight months ago, <clears throat> I made the bravest decision ever in my life. For the first time, I was flying out of my home country, and it was to attend college. Now, most of you who talk about your first time flying normally talk about the excitement you felt being suspended in nearly godly heights. Well, my experience was marked quite differently because I was not just carrying my hopes and dreams, I was carrying the hopes and dreams of my family in my community as well. I was coming to the United States to attend the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And this was after months and months of subjecting myself to the college application process, which I have to admit is the most gruesome experience known to humankind after military training. <laughs> and so on April 16th, 2019, when I finally got to see that email, congratulations, you're now a King Morgan Scholar. It was the happiest moments of my life. There are many reasons that made coming to UW Madison a good choice. I mean, the University of Wisconsin is one of the best schools in the world. The city of Madison um, is a beautiful city. But I have to admit that as once I settled here and winter approached and things started getting colder and colder, <laughs> I started reconsidering some of the reasons that made me come here. I'm just joking. I love it here. <laughs> What struck me the most about traveling um, were the inev inevitable mixed reactions among those close to me. To begin with, my siblings thought that it was cool that I was going to be on a plane for the first time. My friends say, say they could not wait to see the Instagram worthy pictures I'll send to them of me posing in the snow. I mean, how else would people know you've traveled abroad unless you pose, post pictures of you in the snow? But of all these reactions, the most important ones were those of my family in my community who saw the big picture. The fact that I was going to college, Lennox was going to college. Now to you sitting here in the audience and to the many who will be watching this later on, going to college isn't that of a big deal, right? Leave alone that, but getting admitted to a tertiary institution isn't that of a big deal either. Well, not from where I'm from. Where I come from, imagining that far is a luxury not so many people can afford. I grew up in a mid-sized neighborhood called Karyobangi. Karyobangi is one of the many industrial residences that flank the capital city of Kenya, Nairobi. It typifies the lower to lower middle income neighborhoods where education is a highly adulated value, but a hard thing to attain. Higher education opportunities are especially rare. And for many of those who actually make it into college, the responsibility to fund the education and again put food on their tables every day weighs heavily on them. I was among the few lucky ones who didn't have to think of both because I had someone else pay my school fees. I was the dream bearer for many in the community, the reference for realized dreams, who kids will look up to and say, Lennox alienda majuku soma pia mimi naweza, which in English translates to, Lennox went abroad to study, so, so can I. What's more, the fact that I was traveling to study on a full scholarship rekindled the passion for education among the younger ones in my community. They could finally see how academic merit could launch you into stratospheres only dreamt about. Evidently, going to college was a big deal for me. So right here um, on the left, you have the city of Madison. And on the right, you have the beautiful Nairobi. And a lot of times, I get people mentioning or asking me, how is it like, like living um, in a big city like Madison? And I always ask them, tell me more. They don't know that um, the city of Nairobi actually has 4 million people, and that's 100 times more than the city of Madison. And it's interesting to always engage in these discussions. But the question I ask today is, why the celebration? Why the excitement in my community? Well, what education can do for members of my community, and indeed the larger African community, is exponentially bigger than what education can do anywhere else in the world. Education has empowered so many Africans to claim their space in the global market because it equips them with the skills to develop homegrown solutions to some of the problems we face as a continent. The value of education in the African household is the agency it gives you to perceive a better system than the one you've been living in. It aligns you with um, intellectual craftsmen you can apprentice with. It allows you to import the insight you have gathered into your own design. I would like to give the example of a, of a young Malawian boy whose story was actually made into a Netflix movie. For those who've watched um, the movie, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, this is the story of William Kamkwamba. So 
William Kamkwamba happened to be a young teenager in the country of Malawi in the year 2005-2006. And this was a, was a period of time where Malawi was facing a terrible drought. And it being like many African countries that highly depend on agriculture, many people were doomed to be affected by the incoming famine. So this young boy, um, William Kamkwamba, happened to understand the value of education and how education can be used to help the people in his community. But the problem was he was having a challenge going to school. I mean, his family depended on, depended on um, selling um, their crops to gain money. And so since there was a drought, his father didn't have any money, so his father couldn't send him to school. But this young man spoke to his physics teacher. His physics teacher was able to sneak him into the library once in a while. And so in the library, he would hide in a corner. He would peruse physics textbooks, and he was able to see things like magnets. He was able to see the power of energy. And he borrowed his teacher's bicycle and dismantled it and was able, using the physics knowledge he had learned in the library, and the dynamo in his, in his teacher's bicycle, he, he was able to create a water pumping wind turbine that was able to water his family's land and his community's land. That is the power of education. Let's come a little back closer. Right here at UW Madison, we have um, this young gentleman by the name Lusayo Mwakitaka. So Lusayo Mwakitaka is an example, sorry, is an example of another value education can bring to young people in Africa. Sorry, just a minute. Yeah, so the young gentleman whose picture is supposed to be on the left, I don't know why the picture is in there at the moment, um, is another example of what education can do to young people in Africa. Lusayo Mwakitaka is an agricultural business major, and using the, um, the skills and knowledge he gets from the lecture rooms right here at UW, UW Madison, He's employing those skills to rope in more young people into agriculture in his home country of Malawi. These two young gentlemen, William and Lusayo, are just but a representation of what education can do to young people in Africa. My most personal understanding of the importance of, ed of education developed during the time I volunteered as a teaching assistant under Pacemaker International in the year 2018. So in the year 2018, I happened to have volunteered as a teaching assistant at an under-resourced public primary school in Nairobi. And so during this year, I got to be placed, as I've mentioned, in a school that was in another Karyobangi-like environment, if not worse. And in such situations, you have schools that are highly understaffed, but now have to cater for thousands and thousands of kids. And in this situation, you have kids who are quite demotivated, but still have great ambitions. You have kids who come to school, maybe just for the benefit of lunch. But now they depend on people like us, people who have to go out there and show them, them, show them that it is possible for them to achieve their dreams. So during one time, my co-workers and I decided to launch a chess club, you know, just to give these kids um, something to do during their free time. And the amount of kids who signed up for this chess club was immense. And through the game of chess, I was able to see the immense ambitions these kids have the amount of dreams these kids have and the sparkle in their eyes to go out there and do things in the world. Through the course of my volunteering, sorry, volunteering, I tutored and mentored students who showed a mind-blowing capacity to learn, who were full of innovative ideas and never shied from asking questions. So as I've mentioned, I happened to create created a chess club at the school. And during one of um, our training sessions, I decided to play another movie. You know, kids love seeing movies and seeing people with whom they can relate with. And the movie happened to be a Disney show by the name Queen of Katwe. So the movie Queen of Katwe is about a young chess prodigy from the slums of Katwe in Uganda. And so this young girl happened to have learned the, um, the game of chess. Wasn't that quite um, good, good with the game, but with more training, with um, more practice, she happened to get better and better. She went on to beat other affluent chess players in, in her own, own country. People who had trainers by the side, people who had been training their whole lives, but she being just a young girl with nothing, nothing to her name but the game of chess, went on to beat them, went on to the international level and be crowned an international chess champion. Now, just from that one movie, the discussions in Komarok Primary School changed. <coughs> We had now people talking about, I want to be like this girl. I want to go out there, play the game of chess, and become a world champion. And so 
I asked myself a question. What if these young people now had another person in their own community, not someone they're seeing in a movie, someone in their own community who will go out there and do something great? Someone who these kids could relate to and say, I want to be like this person. And that's why I thought it would be great for Africa to invest more in education, for Africa to create more leaders who kids could look up to and say, I want to be like this person. Now, um, another way education tends to help more Africans is through direct action. I have mentioned William and Lucio who are doing more in the fields of agriculture. But another way Africans tend to make use of their education is through contributing back directly in terms of finances to their community. Here's a fun fact. In the year 2018, the total remittance closed at approximately 2.23 billion US dollars. That is the money sent from overseas to, African, to, to Kenya specifically was about 2.23 billion dollars. What this did is it became a top source of foreign exchange for the country of Kenya ahead of tourism and tea exports. What am I trying to say? Kenyans or the African um, general population who go out there and pursue higher education tend to contribute more to their communities with their education. It is a fact that those who go out there to pursue higher education tend to out earn those who don't pay a significant amount. This coupled up with Africa's generosity ensures that Africans create income generating solutions to our own problems. What does this lead to? As I've mentioned, this, this money coming back to create endless cycles of access to quality education. This is what I'm talking about when I mention education needs to be invested in. Now, a lot has been said about the future of Africa and its ability to sustain itself. But one thing I can guarantee you, you is, if the investment of education is not one of the agendas, then we are living a distant dream. Many African leaders have been quoted to emphasize on this, and one famous one is that one by former South African president, the late Nelson Mandela, who said, education is the most powerful weapon with which you can use to change the world. Well, I too have a quote of mine that I borrowed from the former president of Harvard, Derek Bork, and I would like to finish off by leaving you to ponder over it. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Well, for many Africans who have tried ignorance, they've lived to tell the misery. They've lived to tell the sad stories. It is time for us as Africans, and for you who are, who are hearing this, to support the Africans who are trying to invest more in education. Because as I have shown, education is the way to go in Africa. Investment in education is the only way we can create homegrown solutions to most of, most of the problems we face as a continent. Thank you.